Hi, so this is the first of what I think maybe maybe two, maybe maybe three videos on what I'm calling medieval monetary theory. Um, and I'm, I'm making these videos because I've been a little frustrated uh, at people who are who are talking about the the, the history of money, particularly um, history of money in, in the early modern period, or especially in the 16th century um, or, or, or before, who who are approaching the, the question through a through a quantity theory of money framework. Um, and this has been a little frustrating to me because if we're considering questions like what is the impact of the inflow of American treasure uh, uh, into the European economy in the 16th century, um, there is no necessary linear or, uh, or even like positive or negative relationship between increasing amounts of, of outside money, of bullion and credit, right? So, so in fact, uh, uh, increasing supplies of credit might either expand or contract, uh, or sorry, increasing supplies of bullion might either expand or contract the, the amount of credit, um, um, depending on, on the, the microstructure of financial markets. Um, so, so we really have to understand uh, uh, credit markets and, and in, in the early modern period, that means markets and bills of exchange, uh, really. Um, and and we, we have to understand how these work at, at a somewhat technical level in order to understand what we're looking at when, when we look at uh, 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 what's happening with, with the physical coins, right? So what we can observe when we look into the record of, of, of numismatics, of, of coins as physical objects, is really just the tip of the iceberg of the, of the monetary system and changes in the money, right? Like if they change the standard of the money, if they adjust the bimetallic ratios, if they change mint policies, um, and that stuff we might get into in, in the next video or, or two um, is, is the mint. But when we're looking at all of this stuff, it's, it's not just happening in a vacuum. It's happening in reaction to what is happening in money markets, which is something that it's much more difficult to observe directly. So the problem is we need to have a kind of theory of the money market uh, so that we can understand what we're looking at when we look at uh, uh, more readily observable changes in the in the in the, in the supply of outside money or base money, reserve money, whatever coins made out of gold and silver. Um, so, so in this video, I'm going to walk you through a an example of a of a transaction um, in the, the exchange by bills, and and I'm going to try to explain to you uh, where it is that the exchange bankers make their profit and why this is so, and that is quite important for understanding. Uh, just both just simply the mechanism of the uh, of the early modern monetary uh, system, but also some of the political stakes of it, which I'm not going to get into much in this video. Uh, this is really just a, an explanation of, of how it works. And I've, I've done it up with uh, with balance sheets and everything because I know everybody loves balance sheets. So uh, so let's take a look at that. I'm trying to share my screen here. Here we go. Okay, so uh, the first thing that I want to show you is this. Um, this is a, a kind of uh, a bird's eye view of the uh, of the the change and rechange transaction. And I've I've taken this example from a real 16th century uh, source. So this is a this is a transaction. All these names, Sal Salviati and Tommaso and all the rest of them, uh, are are the names taken from this example of a of a guy who who actually participated in, in uh, early modern money markets. Um, so it's, it's a real textbook example. And, and as you'll see, the, the transaction takes place over two geographical locations, all right? So we have Lyon and we have Florence. And I've, and I've marked here that Lyon is, is quoting certain and while Florence is quoting movable. And we'll talk a little bit more about, about that, what that means as we get into the, into the transaction. Um, and so it's two places and it involves six, six total counterparties, right? It's, it's possible that some of these counterparties could be the same, but, but um, be, the, be the same person, but it's, there's, six, there's six different roles in the, in, in the function, okay? And so um, kind of the, the, the transaction begins over here with B and it flows around here until it flows all the way back. And that, that's what we're now gonna look at. Uh, it's kind of step-by-step step with, with balance sheets. Okay, so, uh, so here's the first step in and so we'll begin with uh, 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 me, uh, B, and, and Salviati, C. Um, so so uh, I am an exporter in, in, in Florence. So I'm exporting Florentine goods uh, to my 
to my uh, counterparty, Salviati, who's an importer in Lyon. Okay, so so before this, uh, uh, before the curtain drops on our little play here, uh, I, I have already exported some goods to Salviati, um, who now owes me money. Right, so. So I've got as an asset for me, I've got an account receivable uh, uh, due from Salviati and, and Salviati has this as a liability. Um, and I've expressed this in, in the gold mark, which is the, uh, which is the unit of account, the, the money of account employed by the exchange bankers. Um, but, but one thing that it's important to keep in mind is that uh, uh, Lyon uh, is quoting certain. And what that means is that when I'm in Florence, I know for certain what the value of the mark is in Lyon in domestic Lyonnais uh, money. Okay, so so I'm so in Lyon, I'm I'm ignoring the fact that there is also a domestic coin in in Lyon. We can gloss over that um, because it is it is fixed in the Canto, and we'll talk about that more as we go along. Um, okay, so so I am an exporter. Salviati is an importer. And, and I have an account receivable due from Salviati. Okay, so now what are we gonna do about this? I need to get paid. Well, one option is that Salviati could ship me some coins from Lyon. Now, this uh, is, is not what we really want to do because that is a fairly, fairly pricey means uh, of remitting funds because it, it, you know, you need insurance, right? You gotta, you gotta, you have to, you have to pay uh, the shipping and an insurance on the money. So we don't want to do that. And so we are going to uh, solve this problem for ourselves by making use of the network of exchange bankers. Okay. So that's U A and Tommaso D. So you and Tommaso uh, are you are not ordinary merchants. You're not dealing in merchandise. You are dealing in money. And, and you have a partnership. You and Tommaso have a partnership in which you've agreed to honor each other's uh, obligations and, and that kind of thing. So, so you are correspondent bankers. Um, and you are going to make use of this relationship in order to allow me and Salviati to conduct, to remit funds from one place to another uh, without shipping any metal, right? No metal is going to be shipped at all in this transaction and you are going to make a profit doing that and and the question that we need to understand is where your profit comes from because the transaction that i'm going to describe to you is completely legal under medieval canon law okay this is a non-usurious uh transaction in bills of exchange uh this this matters because well in the in the 16th century during the the protestant reformation um uh, the usury laws were relaxed some, somewhat, and, and this allowed uh, uh, bills of exchange to, to come to function as a domestic monetary medium. And uh, th this was not possible. Um, so if, if usury is not legal, uh, it is not possible to use bills of exchange as a domestic money uh, medium. They're, they're purely international. Um, probably won't get into that, the reasons for that exactly, but, but essentially, essentially, well, the, the, the short answer is that it is usurious to price one money in terms of itself, okay? So if I'm selling you a pound sterling for some price other than a pound sterling, that, uh, according to Aristotle, is uh, uh, injustice in exchange and, and, and based upon this, this, this doctrine, it is, it is usurious. But as you'll see in, in the transaction that we're about to uh, look at, at no point in time is, is, uh, is one money priced in terms of itself, okay? So it, it, we always have a transaction that involves uh, uh, one present money being bought or sold for another absent money. And, and that is what makes this transaction licit according to uh, usury laws. So uh, we can observe kind of in passing that, that usury laws are really a form of financial regulation and not, not so much an outright prohibition on all yield bearing uh, financial transactions of which this is one. Okay, so anyway, so let's move to the next, the next point in time. So, so uh, here, what I've shown is that, is that uh, you, uh, sorry, me, I am going to uh, uh, draw a bill on Salviati. Okay, so Salviati owes me money, and, and he knows that. And so I'm going to write a letter that's going to say, Salviati, you owe me money, and I would like you to pay this money uh, to the person who brings you this bill. And when you do that, I'm going to consider that you have paid me back. Okay, so you, the exchange maker, now have a bill 
here um, uh, uh, that is drawing a gold mark from Salviati. And you are going to give me, in exchange for this bill, 64 acus, which is a coin. Okay. So now, how do we know? Why is it? How do we know that one gold mark drawn on Lyon sells for 64 acus in Florence? Well, we know this because Lyon is quoting certain. So every period, I'm not sure exactly, maybe a quarter, I, I might imagine quarterly, um, Lyon publishes a canto, uh, which is just a list of the price of a gold mark drawn on Lyon in all of the other cities in the network of which Florence is one, okay? So there is a hierarchy in the network of financial centers constituting the, uh, the exchange system. And the hierarchy in this network is determined by which city quotes certain to which other cities. So if city A quotes certain to city B, then city A is, uh, is a level up the hierarchy. In, in Lyon, uh, uh, for contingent historical and geographical regions, uh, in this period is at the top of the hierarchy, and so it quotes certain to everybody. And and Florence quotes certain quotes movable to Lyon, but it might quote uh, uh, certain to other cities that are that are lower down from Florence in in the hierarchy. Okay, so here we're only considering two cities, but this is a the 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 hierarchy of uh, the network of cities in the in the exchange system. Uh, is a is a is a graph with more nodes in it than that. Okay. So so anyway, so you the banker now have an asset, right? Which is that you have my bill of exchange that I wrote you, entitling you to draw money from Salviati, and you also have a liability, which is the which is the AQs that you paid me. Okay. Now what's happened to my balance sheet? Well, I had an asset, which was the money that Salviati owed me. I uh, sold that to to you so uh, so i took i netted this off my balance sheet and and what i got in return was 64 aqs okay so uh so of course at, at this point you know where did these aqs come from well they, they came out of your equity so so if we balance that liability uh on onto your equity then now you have negative equity and that's a problem that we're going to have to solve a little later but it's not a problem for us right now okay and and salviati still owes you uh, a gold mark so what happens next well, you remit the bill to your correspondent Tommaso, who is a banker in Lyon. So you mail the, the bill of exchange to Tommaso, which is much easier than shipping the money and much safer. Um, and so, so we're going to net this, this bill off of your balance sheet, and we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna move it on to, onto Tommaso's balance sheet. And so what, what are we looking at now? Well, the next thing that has to happen is that Tommaso is going to present the bill to Salviati, okay? And Salviati is going to pay him one gold mark. Now, he's going to probably pay him in Lyonnais money, uh, but we don't need to worry about that, remember, because Lyon quotes certain. So there is a fixed rate of exchange between the banker's money, the gold mark, and the, and, and the domestic money in, in Lyon. So we don't have to worry about what coins that's actually paid in. So, so, uh, so uh, Salviati is gonna, so we're gonna net these two things off of, off of this and, and we're gonna replace it with, with these um, um, that also net. So, so now Salviati is, is short a gold mark. So this is being funded out of his equity. So he now has negative equity if we were gonna keep track of that elsewhere. So all that means is that he has a saving of money someplace that's his equity and, and this has come out of it. And, and now Tommaso has this, okay? So Tommaso has that gold mark on his balance sheet. Now. Okay, so this is the exchange transaction has been completed, right? So let's look at where things stand. So I, the exporter, I, as far as I'm concerned, this is all over, all right? Because I have my 64 AQs, which is the money that I, I, I need uh, uh, for exporting what I, what I exported. And so now I can reinvest this into production and, and it's all good for me. And, and it's all good for Salviati too, because, because he's gotten this liability to me off of his balance sheet, right? He's he's paid it. It's come out of his equity, and so he no longer has to worry about about this obligation to me. Um, but from the perspective of the exchange makers of you and Tommaso, uh, this is not hard. This is hardly a satisfactory situation. Why? Well, because you now have negative equity. You've you've dispersed sixty four acus. Uh, uh, to me, and you've, as of yet, you have nothing to show for it. So uh, why are you doing this? Um, and Tommaso has a gold mark um, that 
isn't really his because he didn't he didn't do anything to to all he did was was get the bill and cash it from Saudi Arabia. And so this gold mark really belongs to you. Okay, so Tommaso kind of owes that to you. So he's going to have to get it back to you somehow. All right. And he's also going to have to try somehow turn this gold mark from a gold mark into some acus, which is a real coin. Okay, so Tommaso is going to engage in the rechange. Okay, and the rechange is where the profit is determined. And this was an important aspect of, of why the merchants were able to argue that this is non-usurious because uh, an important part of usury is when the when the yield is fixed in advance upon the writing of the contract, right? So so you say usury? No, I don't do usury. Uh, I because I didn't know what my profit was going to be uh, before I engaged in the transaction. Now, uh, as we're going to see, you know that your profit is going to be non-zero. It's going to be greater. Right? So there is there is not really any any risk. Um, well, there's there's counterparty risk, but there's no uh, exchange rate risk for for you in this transaction. So so your profit is in fact guaranteed um, as long as the market in exchange bills exist, and, and we'll talk about this in a second once we've seen the rechange. Okay, so um, right, so so like I said, so so how are you and Tommaso going to going to solve this problem? Well, Tommaso could ship some money to you, but this would kind of defeat the point. Um, uh, since since the goal was to enable us to have monetary transactions uh, that didn't involve any shipping of bullion. So instead, um, Tommaso is going to look for somebody like Piero. Okay, now Piero and Federigo are just the mirror images of me and Salviati. All right, so Perry, uh, Piero is an exporter um, who has exported some goods to Federigo, the importer in Florence. So now Piero uh, has money on deposit with Federigo in Florence, and, and he wants to get it. Um, now, I've written this money as in a who's, um, and I've, I've made up the number so that it nets out nicely, as you'll see in a second. Um, so it's kind of convenient figures, artificially convenient figures. Um, but the reason that I have listed this debt, this liability in a who's rather than in gold marks is because Florence is quoting movable. Okay. And what that means is that at any given moment in Florence, people don't know how much it costs to buy a bill on Florence in Lyon. Okay, so so if you say say you're somebody, so you're Piero, or sorry, you're 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 you, right? You don't know how much money you're going to get back at the end of the transaction yet because Florence is quoting movable. So you don't know what the current quotation of a coups in Florence is in, in Lyon, right? I hope that makes sense. So, so and, and the reason you don't know is because this is, that that rate is going to be produced by the state of the market in Lyon, okay? So Tommaso is not the only exchange banker who's trying to complete a rechange, all right? There's, there's others. So all of the Tommasos together have to compete with each other for Piero's business um, because they need Piero in order to, in order to make the rechange and, and therefore net out this kind of open transaction that they have with their correspondent. Um, uh, and so, and so uh, Tommaso is going to have to make a quote. He's going to have to quote a price to Piero, and Piero is going to try to find the low, the low quote, and, and that's who he's going to transact with. Um, so, so Tommaso is going to say, uh, yes, you know, so Piero, I, I, you need to get your, your money uh, from Florence. Well, uh, my current price that I'm quoting is that I, uh, I'm, I'm selling, or sorry, I'm, I'm buying acus in, in Florence. Uh, four gold marks in Lyon, and my current price is one gold mark for 65.5 uh, acus. And, and Pierre says, okay, so, so we do this transaction. And, and what happens? Well, uh, uh, Piero is now going to, um, so he's, he's going to write a bill. And, and, so, and so he now long, he no longer has as an asset uh, uh, this this account receivable from Federigo. So we're going to net that off of his balance sheet and move it over here on the Tommaso's balance sheet. So now Tommaso has the bill and, and Tommaso is going to pay a gold mark to Piero uh, uh, for that bill. So now Piero has the gold mark. 
um, and, and notice that this netted the gold mark off of Tommaso's balance sheet. So, so now all he has is this bill. And what's he gonna do? Well, he's going to remit the bill. Um, I think I got ahead of myself here. Oh, I just had an extra one. So, so I just, uh, yeah, so, so he's going to remit the bill. Uh, so, so we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna cross all, so we're gonna move that from Tommaso's balance sheet onto your balance sheet because it's, it's, it's moved. Um, and so now Tommaso is, is done, right? He's, he has, he has netted out his balance sheet and, and well, yeah, presumably you are gonna give him some of your profits, but, but we don't, we don't need to, that's between you and Tommaso. Um, so, so now you have a bill uh, for 65.5 AQs drawn on Federigo. You're gonna, you're gonna get him to, to pay you. So, so now where do we stand? Well, we've netted out the bill, okay? And Federigo has netted out his liability. And now he has a remaining liability, which is 65.5 AQs that he's paid uh, that, that came out of his equity. So, so, so now he's, he's paid for his imports and, and he's done. And, and you're also done now because what happened? Well, you got 65.5 AQs and you were in the hole for 64 AQs. So congratulations, you've made a profit of 1.5 AQs, okay? And everybody else is happy too, right? So, uh, so B and E, the exporters now have positive equity, which means that they got paid for, for the stuff they sold. Um, and F and C have negative equity, which means that they, they sold for, I mean, they, they paid for the stuff that they, that they bought. Um, um, Federito, Feder, uh, sorry, Tommaso has, uh, has netted his book. And so, and so he just, he's gonna get whatever, whatever he gets from your part, he's from his partnership with you and, and you have one and a half AQs. Okay, so that is a complete transaction uh, of exchange by bills. So now the question, where did the profit come from? Well, obviously the profit came from the fact that the AQ has two different prices at once when expressed in uh, gold marks. And this price is different depending on which direction you are going. So when you are moving up the hierarchy, okay, when you're moving from a quoting movable city to a quoting certain city, you're moving up the hierarchy, and that rate is fixed. What that means is that in order for the business that you and Tommaso are engaging in to be worth doing, okay, in order for you to be in the business at all, the rate for the rechange going back to Florence has to be greater than 64 AQs, okay? There has to be a markup on the rechange so now suppose, so what would happen? So suppose, right, that, that the Tommasos are getting desperate. So there's too many of these Tommasos who need to complete the rechange and there's not enough Pierros who, 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 need to, who need to sell bills. Well, what's gonna happen? Well, some of these, well, so all of these Tommasos are gonna be competing and so they're gonna lower and lower their price. But at some point, okay, at some point, as the price gets closer and closer to 64 AQs, uh, all of the dealers are gonna get out of the business because why, if the rate is falling and squeezing the spread, okay, between the two different prices of the AQ in gold marks, then it's just not worth Tommaso's time. He's gonna, he's gonna close up shop. And then the dealer market in bills is gonna cease to exist, okay? so. What's, if the dealer and market begins to cease to exist, well, what's gonna happen? Well, these Tommasos are gonna get a lot more scarce and that, that's gonna drive the price back up again, okay? So the dealers in bills are competing with each other to do what? Well, to quote, the lowest bid for the rechange, okay? That is still worth it for them to accept the risk and the, and the effort of doing all of this all of this business, okay? So I hope you can see those of you who may know something about, about, about the, the dealer market in, in money as it exists today. Well, you will see that there are a lot of similarities with, with this system. And, and the important thing to understand is that this all depends upon the existence of this spread between 
uh, between the two prices of, of the money. And, and that is in a symmetry, right? Between cities that quote certain and cities that quote movable. And this is an asymmetry that it has, well, geopolitical um, consequences, right? I mean, I mean, depending on uh, uh, where you are in the network, the, the asymmetry inherent in the, in the system of exchange by bills might give uh, uh, you a structural advantage, right? It might, it, might, it might give you a kind of um, monetary leg up against your counterparties in, in other cities and different places in the exchange network. Okay. Um, so that that I kind of kind of concludes uh, my analysis of the of the market and bills. I hope that I hope that uh, maybe is more illuminating than than confusing. Um, it certainly took me a while to wrap my head around all of this. Um, but but next time uh, I, I it might be a little while, but I, I would like to make a video where I next the next step would be to explain uh, the relationship of the mint to. Uh, to 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 the uh, to the system of exchange and bills because they're very fundamentally uh, related um, as 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 we will we will find out as we get further into it uh, the the real source of the profit here is uh, an arbitrage on seniorage okay or it's it's essentially an, an arbitrage uh, over the difference between the the nominal and intrinsic values of the coins so it's the fact that uh, coins have a legal premium uh, within their territory uh, over other coins, right? That 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 kings and rulers uh, uh, tried to enforce the the legal overvaluation of domestic money. Um, that is what ultimately uh, creates the spread um, that the exchange bankers harvest. Um, but in order to understand that, we need to learn some more technical things about the mint. Um, that will be the subject of another video. Okay. Well, I hope you uh, found this enjoyable and educational. This is uh, medieval monetary theory.